Um, I'm going to do I'm going to do some very very brief introductions, and then I'm going to ask um, uh, our, our guests to kind of tell us a little bit more from their own mouths about how their offices work and what they do. Uh, and we'll, we're going to kind of do this in a conversational style, uh, not really formal presentations. And then we'll save some time at the end for everyone's everyone's questions if they have any. Um, so I'm going to start off with. Uh, 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 Michelle Shemp. Michelle is, is is still relatively new to the job of the National Ombudsman for the SBA, uh, uh, and her, her job is, is an enormous one. <laughs> She's the one that basically takes complaints from the small business community about uh, regulatory enforcement matters and tries to to help them out, figure out what 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 can be done to change the way some some federal agencies are are functioning and the way they're enforcing the rules. Um, uh, but I'll let her talk a little bit more about that. Uh, uh, in, in just a second. Uh, we've also got uh, Robert Inuzzi here, who, and he is the Assistant Administrator of the Office of Veterans uh, Business Development, um, which, again, I'll let him do a lot more description of what that does. Let, let both of our guests do that from the Veterans Office. Uh, we also have Timothy Green, of course, who is the Associate Administrator, uh, 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 Acting Associate Administrator for the Office of Veterans Business Development. So thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, I think we'll have a lot of veterans who have some have some good questions and maybe some some key points that uh, you all can can take away from here as well. Um, but Michelle, tell us a little bit in a little more detail uh, about your job and and how small businesses can can interact with you. Oh, Todd, thanks so much. And really, thanks for your partnership um, and enabling us to reach out to the community of NSBA members. Um, you know, uh, we approached or we, we we connected through a member of our regulatory fairness board. We have 50 member board that consists all of small businesses. And Marilyn Landis has been a longstanding um, member of both of our organizations and uh, really thought that we had a lot to offer to the veterans group. And so not only do I hope we have a lot to offer, but also I know that Robert and Tim have a lot to add. Um, I'm joined by a couple of members of my team, Mina Wales, the Deputy Ombudsman, and Katie Sly, a case management specialist. And, uh, you know, we're, we're a small group, but basically we exist as a bridge for small businesses to all federal agencies when you're encountering a problem related to regulatory enforcement, fairness, et cetera. And don't be limited because we can help with a whole range of different issues. But the idea behind our creation is that a small business doesn't have the deep pockets to be able to hire high priced lawyers and 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 lobbyists and 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 expensive accountant accountants. And that we're here for you when you're encountering a situation that's tough to navigate in the federal regulatory rule enforcement policy enforcement space. Um, so, you know, that's that's really what we do. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think we, what we, Todd, would you like me to go into more of like the details of what we offer for the business or did you just want an office overview at this point? Maybe just a little bit. I think it'd be helpful okay. to sort of know, sort of, uh, you know, for folks know that you have hearings, and the, but there are other ways that even if people can't go to a hearing that they can how how they actually reach your office. So the easy way, thanks for clarifying, is really if you're encountering a problem or an issue, um, all you need to do is go to our website and file a comment, and I'm going to post that link into okay. the chat. Um, and that's your individual unique circumstance. We call it a comment, it's often a complaint. And what you do is you describe in like a one page description, what it is that you're encountering and the, the solution that you're seeking, right? What would a, what would a, a solution to your uh, satisfaction look like? And then what we do is we take that on, we assign it to a case management specialist on my team. We have federal agency points of contact, all federal agencies, somebody that we work with. And we give that, um, that case to them and put them on a 30 day clock and that they have to respond. They can respond sooner um, within those 30 days to tell us what's happening with your situation, their perspective on it, and whether they can offer the resolution that you're seeking. And again, to underscore, that's any federal agency. 
then sometimes what we see, we will send you the response that they give us, but sometimes we see that there are group issues that start to emerge. There, It's not just your business, but it's multiple businesses that face a particular um, issue. Uh, and in those cases, for example, we're working right now with a group of physical therapists who will have issues with the Center for Medicaid Medicare Services. We can engage on those group levels to foster the dialogue and seek a broader, more systemic solution. Um, as Todd mentioned, sometimes we organize hearings where we want to hear from you as a small business to testify. We're going to be doing a hearing in mid-September. I'll divulge. This is hot off the presses on the subject of federal contracting. Um, and so I, I'm, you know, I know a lot of you are federal contractors and have experiences, prime subs and joint ventures that we'd love to hear from. And so we're going to do that on the margins of our board meeting. And I think just some, to give you a sense of the types of problems that that we do particularly well in resolving, um, surprisingly, tax issues with the IRS. Um, small businesses come in, report difficulties with changing status of their, their company, um, changing circumstances, needing copies of things, unresponsiveness, whatever these may be. The IRS often will uh, back off on assessing a penalty on the basis of a first-time violation or some Thing through our intervention. Right. Um, the whole, many of you probably benefited from um, COVID economic injury disaster loans during the pandemic. And if by any chance you fell into the default and those loans moved over to treasury, we've been a great resource uh, in helping those businesses seek um, a greater customer service consideration of whether those enforcement actions were taken fairly and whether or not those loans can be recalled from Department of Treasury. Um, and then another area where we are tend to be pretty successful is if you're dealing with a contract issue with a federal agency, let's say it's a non-payment issue. There's some sort of dispute over the invoices or um, you uh, are seeking a, um, a request for equitable adjustment or something like that and not getting a fast answer or a, an answer to your liking. Um, we can often engage with the federal agencies on those. So, you know, I'll explain more and I'd love welcome yeah. the Q&As, but these are sort of some categories where I think we're especially mm -hmm. helpful. Yeah, that that's great. Thank you very much. And obviously, mm -hmm. You've got a huge job, but it's it's really good that uh, there's someone like you exists in, our, in the federal uh, infrastructure. It's a great job. Uh, I, I, I turn to, to 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 Robert and Tim real fast, and just sort of, if if there are businesses out there that aren't familiar with the Office of Veterans Business Development, what do they? What are the key things they need to know about what you what you do and what you can do for them? So, so OBD, <laughs> uh, OBBD is a small office that works with veteran entrepreneurs to start, grow, and recover their businesses in times of need. Uh, we do that through the different aspects of our uh, the services that we provide, such as the Veteran Business Outreach Center, which we have 28 throughout the, the country. Uh, those those what's colloquially known as VBOX uh, offer training, counseling, access to capital, and uh, federal contract training. Uh, we also have entrepreneur trip, entrepreneurship uh, training programs focused on women's uh, veteran service disabled veterans and uh, federal contracting. Um, they're available at no cost to the participant. Uh, we also have a couple of programs for transitioning veterans, um, uh, trans transitioning service members and veterans called uh, Boots to Business. And we also offer, offer the Boots to Business uh, reboot for veterans uh, who have been out of the service for a while. And we offer them on military bases, off military bases, and through a, uh, a virtual uh, uh, learning uh, platform. Um, the office is a part of an ecosystem that is, that includes SBA offices, such as the women's business centers or the small business development centers and, uh, what's known as the score mentor and a large, another, a uh, large number of other organizations. Uh, we also coordinate with hundreds of veteran service office organizations, including the American Legion. Uh, our mission is to foster the next generation of veteran and military spouse, small businesses, um, small businesses tend to, or, uh, there's approximately 2 million veteran uh, owned small businesses that generate $1 trillion in revenue and employ approximately over 3 million individuals. So it's uh, quite the honor for us to be able to, to uh, be able to serve our, our fellow veterans. Uh, Tim, Tim and I are both uh, fellow veterans. So Tim, do you have anything to add to that? 
Rob, no, you did did a great job covering. We just, you know, we are part of an ecosystem out there. The challenge for us is getting, you know, we have these services that are at no cost to the veterans. Um, our challenge is really getting the word out on these. We, you know, we spend a lot on these programs, but we don't, you know, equivalently don't market them at the same rate as we, you know, have these programs available. So we rely on every organization like yours, uh, any group we can get in contact with to help us get the word out. And then the way SBA operates is really no wrong door. So if you go to a district office or you go to a small business development center, you'll get you'll get uh, in processed and then they'll get you to the right services. The same with the Veteran Business Outreach Center. If they don't they don't have the services to provide for you when you walk in the door, they'll refer you to someone that does because they have a lot of partnerships across the country. So um, we are a very small office. There's only 12 federal employees in our entire office, but we leverage every other office within SBA. So, you know, part of our job is to make sure when SBA develops policy that we are veterans are included in that policy and get, you know, whatever, you know, kind of a special treatment that they're, you know, deserving. So yeah, we're, we're, we have a great office uh, and like Rob, you know, he's Navy veteran. He's only been with us a couple months. Uh, I'm Air Force and I've been around about uh, five years. So we're just happy to serve. So thank you. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you both. Can you, while we're talking to you guys, can you talk a little bit more about, uh, being certified as a veteran-owned small business and what benefits that gets you, how hard it is to get that certification, and are there services that are available through your office or others to veterans that may not have made it through that certification process yet? Rob, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll take this one since I've lived through the <laughs> that, what they call the vet cert process. So back in uh, about 20, late 2021, there was a legislation that uh, moved the veteran certification process from VA Veterans Affairs over to SBA. Right. Made a lot of sense at the time. Uh, actually, VA was doing actually pretty well with the certification process. Uh, they struggled a few years ago, and then they they fixed it, and they're they're doing quite well. But the uh, policy was already out there. So the SBA administrator made this her top priority in 2022 to make sure that. The veteran certification program was rolled out on time with, you know, huge improvements over the way it used to do. So that in January 2023, we rolled out vet cert. So if you're a federal contractor across the government now, you need to get a vet, you need to get certified with SBA. And if you're doing business with the Veterans Affairs as a veteran-owned small business, you also need to get certified through our our platform as well. Um, the uh, all the extensions have run out, so now you need to you know get certified. So why is that important, um, and why uh, should you do it? Well, first of all, we streamlined the process, so it ma made it a lot easier. There's uh, very few forms you have to fill out, and uh, we're getting people certified in about 15 days. We've done over 15,000 certifications in the last year and a couple months. And the general general feedback we're getting is it's an extremely user-friendly process. We have great customer support. We have a call-in number as well as a uh, online. You can send your questions in. They're very responsive. And uh, so the process of getting your certification is very streamlined, very simple. And we're actually trying to use our veteran certification as the model for our other certification, which includes, you know, women-owned small businesses, hub zone, 8A, all those other certifications are all going to kind of eventually mirror ours, which is going to another priority for the administrator. So, um, so once you're in and you've registered with VetCert, you're going to be able to automatically click the other certifications and then they'll ask if you need a little bit more additional documentation but you won't have to start from scratch so so the whole process has been revamped we think it's pretty easy another reason in the last year um, they raised the percentage of set-asides mm -hmm. for service disabled veteran -owned small business to five percent we've already reached that goal and I, I think it's a little bit tied to the easiness 
of the vet cert platform getting certified and in helping to get the word out because you can go into the system now and look at other you know uh, federal, uh, contracting officers can go in there and look at other certified uh veteran uh businesses in there whether they're service disabled or veteran owned so it uh, we're up over five percent last year uh to about 32 billion dollars that is given to service disabled veteran owned small businesses and then you also have the va who also does um uh, veteran owned small business mm -hmm. i think they have a seven percent goal for what they do um so um so the final comments on that you know the process has been approved there's a lot of business out there for service disabled we want we want service disabled to get get contracts and i know it's hard uh, so we also provide counseling and training to help, you know, especially veteran owned small businesses that are starting out or trying to grow in the area. We do that through all of our resource partners, but we also fund, um, partly fund the Veteran Institute for Procurement. It's a training program out of Montgomery County. And if you haven't heard of it, it's, you know, you can find it on our website, but it's really a program for those that are trying to start and grow in the federal contracting space. We're providing additional funding this year. There was a $2 million set aside, uh, you know, uh, congressionally funded directed uh, income. So it's a, the results from this program are, are fantastic. And if you're a veteran of small business is looking to grow in the, in the federal contracting space, get your certification. It's easy. And then get, come back to SBA for training. And then we'll, we'll try to help you navigate the complexities of the federal contracting space. So. That's great. That's great because, as you know, it, it, federal procurement can be pretty confusing, especially for people who haven't done it before, even for people who've been in it for for years. There can be obstacles they hit sometimes. So, um, is the is the as the training programs you're you're talking about are they designed mostly to help people understand how to go about the procurement, or can they also go there to find opportunities in the procurement system, or is it both? So, well. Uh... If if I was interested in starting federal contracting, my my approach would be go to the actually I would start with the SBA's federal contracting website because mm -hmm. there's a lot of great information there. Get familiar with it, and then if your small business is looking to get into federal contracting or growing, then I would sign up for one of our training extensive training programs. And what you do by doing that, you're joining a mentor network. And the the folks that go through the training say that the training's fantastic, but the mentoring that you get because there's they've had like thousands of graduates and they're all in a mentor network and they can they leverage off each other for business opportunities as well as uh, advice. And you're in, you're in a class of about you know thirty to forty in a class, and then they'll go through the whole process but you're also making connections as well. So, and it's, it's training at no cost to the participant. So yeah, it's, if you really want to expand your network, try to take one of our, uh, I highly recommend the Veteran Institute for Procurement, which is, yeah. you know, partly funded by SBA. The results really speak for themselves. If you look up uh, for those that have gone through the growth program, they almost about 180% growth after two years of graduation and they these programs the in the program they have about 17 billion dollars in prime awards given to vip uh graduates in about the last 10 years so they they're very very successful and they they teach you the a complex problem and they they kind of boil it down for you so. great thank you that's terrific yeah. um but the, you get access to all that once you're certified correct so we do still hear from folks. I'm glad to hear that, that you've got things on track and things are being streamlined, but we do kind of sometimes hear from folks who are having trouble or it's taking longer than they expected. So maybe, maybe this is a question for Michelle. Uh, what should they do if they're encountering that? Should they get, reach out to your office? Should they reach out to the ombudsman? Both? <clears throat> it doesn't matter, really, truly. I think, you know, the... Um, Tim and Robert have done an amazing job, and I think the the there are very few businesses that are currently encountering difficulties in the certification process. It really yeah. is has made dramatic improvements, and they should be really proud. However, there is customer service types of questions, and those resources seem to be fairly responsive. Since I've been here, I don't think we've ever received a a comment or a complaint or question related to the veteran certification process. But some of the businesses may be seeking other certifications through the SBA. 
there is a backlog on the women's own own small business certification process. Yeah. Um, there have been changes recently to the socially and economically disadvantaged business 8A certification. So, um, you know, over the horizon, the goal is that a business can come in and seek all of those certifications at once, but we're not quite there yet. And so, yeah, it, a lot of times people will come into us say, you know, I, I put in my application a long time ago. I don't know what's happened with it. Um, I ran into a problem on X, Y, or Z kinds of issues. Um, and we can engage directly um, as additive to the customer service. We have points of contact in the office that does the certification program. Um, there's also uh, an interesting provision I just learned about, which is if you're a women-owned small business and you actually have a procurement I, uh, that is that is pending that certification, there is an ability to sort of um, uh, give your application greater urgency in order to enable you to benefit from that contract. So again, you know, we 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 can engage with the correct folks on that. I will also say that. So then, let's say you go through the process and your certification gets rejected. Um, you can't bypass, but the appeals process is to go to the Office of Hearings and Appeals in the SBA. And you need to do that in a timely manner um, in order to register a reconsideration or an appeal. Uh, sometimes a business doesn't quite get the information they need once it goes into that appeals process. And so, again, we can be a, a resource for those businesses to come to us. And, and then we contact the Office of Hearings and Appeals and ask how it's going and what the timeline is and is anything else needed, et cetera. Um, so, again, just, you know, uh, we work so closely with Tim and Robin, everything that they've done is is great. But um, if any of that is posing a problem for, for, for the businesses, please let us know. Yeah. And I know uh, a lot of people, you know, they send out email or, or they'll get a send a voicemail and never hear back. But we do, I've tested our call center, center numerous times and I get a response almost immediately. Um, it's, it's an 800 number. I can pass it to you uh, if you'd like, or um, I can give you a, a one page document that covers the vet cert program and I have all that information on there. So I can share that with you after the, and you can share it with your, that would be great because we'll, yeah. we'll send out a, a, a copy of this uh, recording to everyone who participated and so we can include anything yeah. you might want to include in that as well to folks so since it's recording i'll give you the number it's uh 1-800-862-8088 and it's uh, manned eight from 8 a.m to 6 p.m eastern time monday through friday uh, that but you can leave a message as well but you know if you want to talk to somebody that and the response rate has been Good. So they, they'll answer if you call them. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Um, Michelle, let's talk about that sort of aside from the SBA right now. Um, uh, a lot of companies tell us that are having problems with particular agencies. They don't, sometimes they don't know about your office. Uh, sometimes they do, but they still, they don't want to get crosswise with the, the folks you're dealing with the agency. Um, so, so what's what's the best recourse for folks? How can you help them best? Do they have to give you their name and details, uh, their business name, and identify themselves, or uh, is it more effective if they do? What's what's sort of best practice here? Uh, thanks, Todd. It's a great question. Um, so there is an option when you file a comment to say that ask the off my office to keep your information confidential, um, and uh, that does limit. Our ability, if that makes you feel comfortable and give us the information and then we can engage in a dialogue and all, um, that's absolutely fine. Um, you, we may not be able to get your particular um, case resolved satisfactorily unless the other agency knows who it is. We have um, agency contacts, uh, again, throughout the federal agencies. Oftentimes, those contacts are in the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business, mm -hmm. or they're in the Office of the General Counsel or Regulatory Affairs. They're not necessarily the people you're going to have an issue with. They're the whole idea and spirit of us and our federal agency partners is my office is an independent third party. We deal with credible interlocutors on the other side 
to ensure fair treatment. Um, and so um, basically that there are the, our, our agency, federal agency counterparts are the first go to people. If you give us permission to divulge your information, then we let it be known to them and we seek a higher level review. Um, at the same time, and then they're on that 30 day clock and, you know, considering your case and and giving you an answer to that, all the federal agencies in accordance with the Small Business Regulatory Enforcement and Fairness Act which established us, um, are required, they need to have non-retaliation policies in place and things like that to protect you. Um, but then in addition, while we go through that, we'll often try to open doors to other resources that can help you simultaneously. So, you know, seeing some of the questions that are coming in, some people are taking advantage, but not all, of the procurement um, 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 center representatives. These are people who can help you during, even during the solicitation process, to be positioning yourself competitively for work, mm -hmm. right? And so we can say at the same time, you're worried about something going south in an upcoming procurement, you can also engage the PCRs. Um, we, we, you know, work closely with the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization in each of the federal agencies, and oftentimes they are our points of contact, but if not, we'd go to them. Um, a lot of agencies also have ombudsmen. Uh, and so we know all the different federal agency ombudsmen, and sometimes we'll reach out and say, you know, can 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 we get together and and get some additional support for small businesses? Um, we receive uh, small entity compliance guides or small business compliance guides anytime a new rule is issued that um, um, significantly impacts small businesses. So we not only know those and have them. But sometimes we discover that they're not there, and then we bother the agencies and their responsibility to produce them. And then we also kind of are learning and a resource and able to figure out if you really want to do an appeals process, what that looks like, um, and where to go, and timelines and things like that. One recent example that I'll bring up because I think it might interest folks: if you're in the construction uh, uh, area engineering and construction, um, prime or sub, um, there is a new rule that came out on project labor agreements, which means that federal contracts uh, for construction of over $35 million, the default is that, um, they, that, that the um, bidders will enter into project labor agreements, which requires a relationship with unions. Um, this is was put into effect at the end of last year. Um, we recently were at a Seattle roundtable and a construction business, veteran-owned, service-disabled veteran, brought it up and said, I, I, I think this is going to make me non-competitive for work that I've previously done. I'm a sub to big primes in the construction industry. And uh, out of that roundtable, we, we did some sleuthing and found that there wasn't a small entity compliance guide. And so now we're trying to find, again, we, 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 we agencies should be providing us with subject matter experts who can answer the questions of particular business as a person that you can call and talk to. And we discovered it wasn't there for this. So now we're beginning to step in, get the additional resources, identify the questions. And this likely is a broader systemic issue that we would like want to be reaching back out and providing the FAQs and small entity compliance guidance stuff. So if you're particularly interested in that issue, you know, let Todd, Ian, or Reed know and we can follow up. But that's the yeah. kind of thing that that we try to do for businesses. That's great. Uh, just out of curiosity, do you find that the folks in other agencies outside the SBA to be to be responsive to you? Does it vary by agency? Um, or... You know, it's interesting. I think our counterparts, yes, because um, it, it's kind of mission. They buy into the mission of what we're trying to do, right? Yeah. Small businesses, you all are like the most credible public, uh, uh, what is it, of, of the main, um, what would you call it, organizations, categories of organizations. Yeah. across the U.S., according to polling, are the most respected in our country. And so I think as, as civil servants, as federal employees, like we all kind of, when you when you say, we, we've got to help the small business, we've got to level the playing field, we've got to be accessible to the little guys and gals businesses in this world, it taps into something and it's not very hard to get collaboration. Yeah. 
That is true. I, you look at polls, the, the most respected institutions in the country are, they, they flip order, but they're, it's small business in the military. So veteran small businesses should really be at the top of uh, people's consideration, I think. I hadn't even connected those dots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, well, thank you. You know, I actually have quite a few questions. So uh, maybe I'll see if, if any of you guys have anything to add before we get to questions, uh, but maybe we should uh, uh, ask our staff to sort of uh, throw us out those that, uh, that, have, that have come in that we can answer. Anybody want to add anything first? I want to get to the questions. Okay, excellent. Uh, Ian, do you want to start us off? Yeah, that would be great. Let's see here. Again, thank you all for your questions here in the chat. Uh, and we just ask that you keep them coming. Um, let's see here. Our first question is from a leadership council member of ours, an SBA member of ours uh, out of the Los Angeles area. Um, he writes, thank you uh, all for your commitment and uh, Robert and, uh, and Tim for your military service. Can you please identify your department's top three priorities and what you are doing to address um, and resolve those issues from a funding and resource perspective? So, uh, Rob, I could take this one. Um, for our office, we have uh, actually three priorities that we're uh, actually four we're working on right now. One is to expand our veteran business outreach center so we could reach more rural and underserved communities. And we, we've we already received over a million dollars funding. So we're gonna expand our program by three VBOX this year. And we're gonna continue to you know, fight to get uh, veteran business outreach centers in every state. They cover every state, but uh, some veteran business outreach centers do multiple. We also are implementing a customer experience survey this year to try to uh, find out where we're lacking in uh, services or, you know, customer experience. So when they come into a veteran business outreach center, how are they getting served? Are they getting what they need? Are we missing anything? So we we implemented that just this month. So we're uh, that's already finalized. And then another area of focus, uh, two other areas, uh, military spouses have, have been extreme challenges for their employment as well as entrepreneurship. So we've been uh, trying to get the word out on our entrepreneurship programs for military spouses. And we actually created a what they call a military spouse pathway to business program, a curriculum for military spouses. So that's something we just initiated as well. And the last thing we're trying to do is figure out access to capital uh, for military spouses as well as veterans. How do we, you know, what are the issues? Uh, how can we better uh, leverage and uh, get veteran-owned small businesses access to capital, you know, when they, the challenges that they face with moving and building collateral and everything. So we're, we're, we're digging a deeper dive into that, trying to figure out how we can service. Um, and that, that's something, you know, we know about for years, but we're, we're, uh, the administrator has really taken a keen interest in how we're uh, providing access to capital for uh, military, uh, veteran-owned small businesses. So those are the priorities for us this year, and we're uh, we're tackling each one as much as we can. Thank you. You won. Mine, mine is mine is to to reach more people. It's all about scale um, for us, and so we're doing it a bunch of different ways. I mean, one is we want more and more businesses aware of what we have to offer so that we can grow all of those individual cases and numbers of businesses we're helping and succeeding to have their problems solved. Um, the second one is through that effort to identify the more systematic problems that are affecting, you know, tens of thousands, if not millions of small businesses. I know, for example, the beneficial ownership information reporting and things like that are issues that we're tracking closely. And again, if, you know, trying to make sure folks aren't penalized unfairly and things like that are related to that. I know that it's not an issue so much for your members, but still for others. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, really, truly, it's it's it, 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 it's just um, you know trying to trying to get some some wins for our office because I think that'll help us sell ourselves if we can show that we have solved those problems yeah. for many you know thousands or millions of businesses. I thank you both for your thoughtful answers there. Um, and before we continue with with these great questions, 
Um, we'll go back to the very beginning. We have a question from a member who is wondering whether the certification process and in general, the guidance that you've given us today also apply to veteran owned small nonprofits. So the answer is yes. Uh, veteran owned small business nonprofit can uh, get certified just like any other, uh, any other small business. So I don't think there's any restriction there. Fantastic. Um, well, thank you for that insight. Um, with that segue, we will be having uh, a familiar face and a celebrity question here uh, from an NSBA member and uh, from the co-founder of the National Veterans Business Development Center, Keith King. Uh, it looks like Keith has, has just joined us on the panel. Um, and Keith, it looks like you'll have access to your audio and video now. Um, Keith, we'd like to give you the floor for uh, for your question and for a little plug uh, for NVBDC. Thank you, Ian. I, I tried to start the video, but it keeps telling me that uh, I can't turn it on. So <laughs> unless you can turn it on. We'll uh, we'll work on that. Sorry. Sorry for the pest. Oh, there we are. There we go. All right. Just had a little fast on the trigger here. So you know what? <laughs> listening to you, the three of you, first off, I'd say hi, welcome, thank you to our fellow veterans. Uh, I am an Army vet, Vietnam veteran. Uh, but thank you guys for what you're doing. I come from a perspective, I think, where sometimes you look at what the beginning of this looked like. The people who actually wrote the original law back in 99 were my friends and still are, many of them. Uh, shortly after that law was passed, um, one of the people who started this federal contracting uh, as a service disabled vet, I came out of Vietnam disabled. The point being is, is that the transition and all the other issues we've had over all those years uh, I have to tell you what I heard today is one of the most positive things I've heard about what our government is doing for our veterans. I want to thank you guys for doing that. You know, the issues that I think that we have in the sense of working with uh, any element of the government is always going to be the idea of what you guys are addressing um, in a sense of training, education, um, one of the things I did over the years was simply ask the veteran, are you prepared to actually respond to a 183-page pit? <laughs> they go, oh, my God, what are you talking about? I'm talking about responding, you know. And on page 191, it tells you that you have to use a 10-point aerial. Oh, my God, to put it all in, you know, whatever. And those are the kind of issues that I sound today that you guys are addressing. That's great. Uh, you may know I'm very involved with the early form of the V-Box and frankly, CBE. Um, the progress through the years of when that was originally uh, launched, I think is still an issue that I would like you guys to be aware of in the sense of our veterans. The dichotomy, if you will, between recognition of service disabled and veteran owned businesses. There is a lot of probably behind the scenes uh, concern about those issues. And the fact that the standard of what is considered to be disabled is an issue that's kind of really quietly <laughs> laying in behind because for those of us who were involved in getting that law written, and putting that whole issue together, there was a lot of debate. So I think the fact that you're training, that you're looking at it, you're trying to bring uh, more education to what I would call both pieces, um, is great. Thank you for, for changing it, because I can tell you just the attitude between this presentation and some of the VA presentations I've been through for the last 18 years <laughs> or more, whatever, uh, it's been very encouraging. 
And with that, what I would like to make sure that I know you already know all this, but what we found when we created the National Veteran Business Development Council is the difference in the standards, if you will, of certification. Flat out the standards, if you will, that the corporations require is different, dramatically different than your standards. Now, it is what it is. Uh, I know you've been working with WeBank. WeBank, frankly, was my mentor, one of my mentors, uh, 12, what, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, uh, when we launched our certification for corporate members to recognize veterans in the first place, because it had never happened. But the fact is, is, is that we still are looking at working with yourself in SBA, if you will, to at least see if we could help in some way or either working together or providing opportunities uh, for our veterans, even if they're certified by us or certified by you or whoever, to make sure that we have some basis where when the corporation says, is this in fact a veteran owned or is this a service disabled veteran owned? what standards were applied for this certification, that we can address that in a positive way, we can address that in a, in a cooperative way. Uh, it's something where you look at our corporate members, pushing the better part of 200 at this point is virtually every major corporation in, in this country, okay? And that's always something that I look at saying, hey, how do we tie that in to help our fellow veterans, small businesses? Because the other issue, for us anyways, and I will tell you point blank, corporations said to us, do not get caught up in small business. And I said, what does that mean? That means certify every small business you can, but if a large company or a medium company comes, because as a former contracting entity of my personal business for what, 14 years, um, you get to a point where you grow to become a medium-sized company or a friend of mine who grew to become a large company <laughs> and he was panicking, going, oh my God, you know, I'm going to lose my veteran certification because I'm now a large company. And I told him, stop whining, you know, I, come on, you know, you're a large company over Hey. Thank somebody in this process, but that's a reality. Hey, me real quick, apologies to interrupt. That that's uh, we're we're headed in a great direction. But um, if if we could with uh, um, with Michelle, Tim, and Robert, um, if you could share with us just briefly, as as Keith was mentioning about um, the uh, you know the the process of of certification and and what those safeguards look like, I think uh, that would that would put um, some some members' businesses' minds at ease and knowing uh, who their community members are and, and who they're competing with or working with in, in earning contracts. Yeah, this is Tim. Uh, so I'm not really uh, the expert on all the technical aspects. We'd have to uh, uh, get you connected with the government contracting business development. Once we rolled out the certification program, uh, it, it moved over to government contracting. I know Keith King knows Larry Stubblefield quite well. Uh, we we coordinate with them now as they are running the program. So I'd have to get back to you. I don't really have a good answer or know all the different uh, details of the specifics on the standards and everything, but I could get you connected with the person that does. Anything we can do to help is, you know, an open invitation because again, you know, we created all this and we did this whole veteran. I think a lot of people simply think that this veterans have always been around as uh, legal right. contracting entities. And when they find out that, no, you know, it really was launched, approved as legal contracting entities in 99, they go, oh my God, I thought it was like, you know, last 50 years, corporations. 
Yeah, and Keith, uh, thank you. Um, oh, yeah, that's a part of the background. Yeah, yeah. and then, you know, generally it's, you know, uh, it has to be 51% owned by, you know, a veteran, uh, managed by a veteran. So the, there are some caveats there. I just don't want to sure. uh, give oh, any yeah. wrong information on here. I, I can get those standards for you um, and send them your way. But um, it is something that we, we have in the final rule sure. that should should be able to share with you. Yeah, and, and yeah. thanks for being here, Keith. But I actually think all those comments I think have generated even more questions. <laughs> yeah, have they? They they certainly have. Um, before we let Keith go here again, uh, we'd like to thank him and the NVBDC for their uh, partnership and collaboration with us, and uh, we look forward to keeping these conversations going and uh, to learn more about uh, their mission and the work that NSBA is doing with NVBDC. Uh, we invite you to visit the link in the chat. Um, we will use this as a segue, though, uh, to a, another question here uh, from a member who uh, is a veteran um, and who is married to uh, a, a woman who has a spouse, I should say, who uh, okay. is a minority that, that qualifies for a different certification. Um, in order to compete for or be eligible, rather, for either uh, veteran-owned small business certification or perhaps a different uh, uh, specialty certification, um, one of the two spouses would have to uh, have 51% ownership of their business. Um, Michelle and team, do you have any insights for someone like this who might be in a bit of a pickle and uh, you know what they might be able to do to get on the right path for certification um, or at least determine which, which path they should take? You know, I saw that. Uh, Tim, do you know, because this is a first for me, and and Robert, I'm assuming it's a first for you too on this one. I think there is a way to work through this. Um, I would recommend that uh, they call that help desk number and they'll connect you with the um, the right person because that, that is a very specific uh we haven't had yeah. too many of those cases brought to me, but I can I can connect you also with the program manager, and you can figure out a way to to work through that. Um, but I I have heard of that, uh, but I haven't uh, I don't have the resolution off the top of my head. And if you don't get an easy answer through the help desk, I think I'd be really curious to be able to help you and myself because that's yeah. the kind of answer I'd like to know. Yeah, and too. I'd be glad to connect them too if they want to send reach out to me. I can connect you with the uh, program manager. You figure out a strategy for solving that dilemma. Well, thank you very much. And and on that note, uh, I know that we have a, um, a few members of ours on the call who are not part of the military community who are just regular small business owners going through the same SBA processes. Um, so whether it's our, our member who's trying to decide which certification to pursue uh, or others on the line, uh, could you provide us a, a brief snapshot of, of any differences that there might be between um, a, a VOSB slash SDVOSB certification and a, a WOSB certification, for example? Um, well, so the process right now, like we said, the vet cert process takes about 15 days. Uh, the women-owned small business process can take six months to a year. So that's the big difference right now. Plus the uh, administrative burden to fill out a women-owned small business application is uh, pretty cumbersome. So if you, if you, my recommendation is if you have a women-owned small business certification in the pipeline, you know, continue to, you know, uh, that process and continue to check on it. Uh, by this fall, we're going to have what they call my SBA, and all the certification programs are going to fall under one. So when you, if you're a women-owned small business and you're a veteran, you'll be able to click both those and then fill out one set of application. And uh, it's going to speed up the process for getting the certifications as well as uh you know um make it a make it a lot easier on administrative burden one thing i do want to highlight if you're a, a woman-owned small business in your final year of 
uh, certification. SBA is granting a one-year extension to that certification to uh, help process some of the applications that they're behind. And that guidance uh, is either released or should be released uh, soon. I think it is put up on our website right now. So you can look at the women on small business there. If you're in your final year of certification, they are granting a one-year ex extension. But the, I don't have a date when we think all the certification uh, platforms are going to be under one umbrella, but I, we expect it uh, late this fall. And uh, when that happens, you'll you'll see a massive change in how this the timeline for processing all those. If that makes sense. What one additional um, resource I want to underscore, and Ian, I noticed a number of questions related to it. Um, so there are two main go-to places um, for you in terms of federal contracting, one being the Procurement Center Representatives, and it's just you can Google it, Procurement Center Representatives, it's organized geographically, so you can find uh, who would be appropriate and the, their contact information. The other are the Apex Accelerators. Um, they are, are um, sponsored by the Department of Defense and supported. Um, and so they can too give you far more, um, what is it, nuanced understanding of what types of certifications will position you given your industry mm -hmm. categories of acquisitions for that. So they're there to like work for you directly as an individual small business. And then, and then, just to underscore, I think there was something in the in the chat or the the Q and A's about are these organizations well resourced enough? And it's 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 it varies tremendously across geographies. Who's got backlogs? Who doesn't? So I just urge you, there is um on the SBA website a local assistance resource. You can search by zip code. Um, you can try to find for your area uh, or even, I mean, nowadays, it doesn't even matter what area you're in, right? Because we're also virtual in terms of getting support. Um, get out of your area if you're not getting the help you need within your area. We can find resources elsewhere um, because, you know, some places it may be that the Apex Accelerator has a long list, but you might be able to get into a small business development center or something like that. Um, Somebody but, you know, asked course, about, there was ahead. a question about PCRs. Uh, yeah. Uh, procurement contracting there is if you go to sba.gov federal contracting and then there's counseling it's pretty easy to find but all the pcrs are listed there and you can just uh, search by a geographic area so it's, they're pretty easy to connect with fantastic thank you both for your insights there um we'll wrap up here with a few final questions um one question is from a member who uh, has his certification and his his bid on contracts for for quite some time now, um, and and he's wondering about um, uh, different agencies' goals or the the government the federal government's overall goals for uh, contracting with with veteran owned businesses. Um, he asks, how can we help agencies meet their five percent um, goals for uh, for veterans and and service disabled veteran owned businesses? Yeah, I think Tim, you had mentioned that there's that you've exceeded five percent on the service uh, disabled veteran yeah. goal, uh, but that's government wide. Are there particular agencies that are doing better, and some that are maybe still below five? Or is, how does it shake out? Yeah, obviously there are some that are doing extremely well. SBA, for an example, we we obviously score really high on s small businesses as well as veteran owned small businesses. You know, so uh, but there are. Yeah, there are some. I think DOD and VA are actually doing pretty well. Um, there was actually a, uh, some legislation about doing a VETS first program for DOD, like VA. So if you're veteran-owned small businesses, you could do uh, federal contracting with the DOD and get set-asides for that, just like you would with VA. That that would be huge, a uh, huge market there. Um, but yeah, so they're... Uh, there are some agencies that aren't meeting their goals and we we consult with them and we encourage them to uh, do that, but we're not satisfied with 5%. You know, that's our goal, but we we're, you know, like all military, we're overachievers. We want to, you know, we want 6% now we want, you know, we, you know, 5%, it takes the pressure off by, by achieving it off of us, our office, but 
uh, we're not satisfied until you know all the veteran-owned small businesses get their you know their day day you know because we also want to increase the numbers as well not only just the dollar numbers but the number of companies that are able to participate okay. uh, so there's a lot of constant pressure on those that aren't meeting the goal to to really do that and one way we're doing it we have an advisory committee with all the federal agencies and we actually meeting with them this afternoon and we kind of embarrass the ones that don't meet their goals and we ask them you know where can we help? Uh, you know, what what do we need to do to get you your numbers up? So we'll, we'll have that meeting and those tough discussions this afternoon with the other federal agencies. But we're we're always constantly trying to get our numbers up. Right. Over. Yeah, thank you, Tim. And one final question before uh, we call it a day here. Um, of course, we have members who submitted questions um, that we weren't able to get to. And some folks have uh, more specific cases that they might need assistance with. Um, what is the best way to either access resources through your office or to um, follow up on a specific point of order? I'll just start with, um, you know, you can, a lot of these individual experiences with particular procurements, particular frustrations about, you know, previous competitions and things like that. Those are the kinds of things you can send to our office. Um, if it's the kind of thing that we want to take directly, we decide that we want to take directly to the particular agencies involved, we can, um, or we can, you know, connect you to the procurement contracting representatives for your particular area. Um, you know, I, again, just to underscore, you know, these may just be uh, a, a particular comment that you share to us of this is my experience as a veteran owned small business and I don't feel like I'm being accorded the, the same opportunity as the large businesses in the primes and we start adding that to the evidence that we're building. Um, I, I will underscore, I saw something in there about um, joint ventures and pursuing joint venture opportunities. That is going to be the subject of the hearing that we're going to be doing in mid-September. Our email is ombudsman. You have to know how to spell ombudsman. O-M-B-U-D-S-M-A-N at SBA.gov. Um, it's all in the link that we, that we posted in the chat. But I, you know, please do put us to work for you on these issues. This see, we, we're that's what we're here for, and that's what we love doing. So this has been a great opportunity. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. And for us, if you, uh, if there's a chance of copying these questions into an email, you can send them send them to our office. Uh, we'd be glad to provide responses back to you, uh, whoever sends them to us, and then. Um, you, you can send them to me actually, and I'll I'll coordinate it. But it's Timothy dot green at sba.gov and then all of the everything we talked about is really on sba.gov slash veterans all of our programs are listed out there as well so you can you can look at that as well but if you want answers for any of the specific questions you know especially on veteran certification or anything to do with with our office please send them my way and i'll i'll make sure we get a response to you thank you oh thank you um before we, uh, Todd, before we give you back the floor, I see we're already past the hour mark. A little bit. Michelle and, and company, if you would like to share anything, any final words or anything else with our uh, membership, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, no, I just really want to express appreciation to Todd, Huey, and the great collaboration. And again, just underscore, put us to work for you. So thank you for this opportunity to make that offer to your membership. Oh, thank you. I spoke enough, so I'll let I'll let Rob if he wants any <laughs> last comments. But I I want to you know we're we're all we all have the same mission. You know we we approach it from a different angle, but we're really here to make sure that the opportunities are there for our veteran-owned small businesses, service disabled owned, and and so forth. So we're just happy to serve. So thank you, Rob. And Rob, if you have anything else, very very happy to serve. And I want to echo what Michelle was saying about um about how we're we're here to work for you and um uh, to express our, our gratitude for being able to do so so thank you for having me and thank you for having all of us well thank you for being here with us Tata, please yeah. yeah we really appreciate it and, and thanks to all the participants for being with us as well 
Um, I think we shared some really good information here. I think maybe there's an opportunity to do something like this again in the future, uh, maybe on a more targeted topic or something else. Um, so uh, we really appreciate your being with us today to Michelle, Robert, and Tim uh, for taking the time. And uh, we appreciate your partnership. And thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, tune in for future webinars and other topics. Uh, we'll be trying to share the best information we can with small businesses out there. So thanks for being here. Have a great day, everybody.